One note before we start, this is just a prototype made by me, not a professional kit. So go ahead and pull out your hot glue gun, pull out your tape, and be ready to trim any pieces if they don't fit perfectly. There are two 3D printed parts for the chassis, and I'm using 50 to 1 metal drive motors, and then two GM3 gear motors for the transformation mechanism. Each wheel takes two racks, and then four actuation components, which I'm calling A, B, C, and D. The wheel itself is made up of five pedals and a centerpiece. Uh, four of those pedals are driven by four different connecting rods, and one of them is passive. You'll also need three millimeter axles and 3D printed spacers. And then finally, I'm using an Arduino Uno with a motor shield and some Bluetooth to control all of this. Each wheel will also need five off-road grips, which I didn't show because I'm currently 3D printing them. The first step of assembling the wheel will to be install the little actuation beams. So you just slide those into the pedals and then put one of the three millimeter axles in the middle. To help center the axles, the three different printed spacers can go right on either side and that just holds them in the middle. After you've installed all the actuation beams, you can take out the center of the wheel and then install each of the pedals onto the wheel using those same 3mm axles. There aren't any centering beams for these pieces, so I'm just using a small screwdriver to get the piece perfectly centered. The last pedal is the most difficult and you kind of have to push the pedal next to it down out of the way in order to get that peg in. Once that's done the wheel is complete and then you can go on to the actuation mechanism. I start by just pushing the axle rods slightly into the D component and that's just so that they can be later slid all the way over and used to attach the actuation beams. Now you don't need to do this now, that's just what I did. Uh, that piece can then be slid over piece B and the piece C is just used to cap off that opening so it stays attached. You can then go ahead and slide all of that over the axle rod and then attach all of the actuation beams to part D. Now make sure that the passive pedal is lined up with that part C because obviously each of the actuation rods need an attachment point. Now that one passive pedal is actually being driven by elastic because it doesn't have an actuation rod. So go ahead and take a length of elastic cording or if you need to use a long rubber band that will work as well and feed it through the second hole up on the pedals and one of the pedals has a hole in the top of it and you'll see there that's actually for the knot in the elastic so as you feed the elastic around when you arrive at that pedal just pull the elastic out of that hole you can then go ahead and stretch the elastic fairly tight and then just make a knot and the elastic should be tight enough that it readily pulls each of the pedals into the closed or open position. So you can just test that like that and this tightness looks pretty good. So I'll just go ahead and uh, trim off the excess then. You'll notice the finished wheel has grooves along the edge. These are for grips which you can mold from urethane rubber using the mold files or you can hand mold your own using Sugru. When in the open position there are holes on the outside of the wheel and those are for the off-road leg pieces and there are different ones of those that you can attach but I'm going to leave them off for now.
Next, you can take the two racks and attach them to the transformation mechanism part A so that the flat part of the part A is facing the racks. Now, I had to clear out the holes a little bit, but once you do that, you should be able to push one of the metal pins right in uh, to secure them. And then, just like the wheel, you're going to need two of them for the complete robot. Now you can finally take out the actual chassis of the robot. And this is just two pieces that are hot glued together. Uh, the hole right up on either side is for the drive motors. And then you can see the front and back have locations for the GM3 gear motors, which will drive the rack and pinion setup. So there are probably about two dozen better ways to mount the motor, but what I've done is wrap them in tape so they're an interference fit, and then just jam them into the body. When you're adding the drive motors, just make sure that you position the axle so that it's closest to the bottom of the robot. And then to keep everything in place, uh, I've added a thin strip of hot glue to each of the motors. If you don't plan to take the robot apart, then you can probably add a little bit more than I did. Once the motor is dry and all secure, you can slide the racks into their slots and then start with mounting the wheels. Now if you want to do it right, there's actually a hole in the center part of the wheel and you can drill out the axle of the motor and put a pin through. That's the ideal way to do it. If not, you can actually rough up the axle with sandpaper and epoxy it. For now though, I'm just going to be pushing the center right onto the axle. Now that the wheels are attached, you can slide out part A along with the racks to connect with part B. And you'll see that holes will line up on the top and bottom of those pieces, and you can push a pin through to connect them. To finish up the chassis, you can pull out the wheel for the back and then slide that into its slot and push a pin through the center. Next, the GM3 motors that drive the rack and pinion setup need mounted. Now I'm using acrylic pinion gears, but you can also 3D print your own. And so these just slide into their locations, and you kind of have to jiggle the racks a little bit to get the pinions to mesh in. But once you do that, they should fit snugly, and you can hot glue them down. At this point you can install the limit switches that can give you feedback as to where the racks are. So there are two little notches in the racks and when the racks are either in the fully extended or fully retracted position it lets the limit switch extend and any other place the limit switch will be depressed. So you can just put the switch into its little notch there and add some hot glue and then make sure you keep pressing the limit switch down as the glue dries. At this point, the body of the robot is pretty much done. I'm going to go ahead and install the off-road grips that uh, just press fit into the uh, pedals of the wheel. So you can see I already have the metal pegs pressed into the grips, and I'll go ahead and just install all of these now. And there you go, this is the complete robot body, and the rest of it will differ depending on what microcontroller you're going to use. So here I'll just quick open this and show you how the mechanism works. And then 
the next step will be to install the battery in the Arduino. Now if you are using an Arduino, there is a little notch right behind the rear actuation motor and an Arduino fits pretty nicely there. And the indent behind that can be used to install batteries so that the center of gravity isn't too far forward.